I'm not sure masks is a micro well of it. Let me give you another welcome. And rejoice that we're here. You feel so much better. Welcome to also to those who will be seeing us on the video later. And whether you are here in person or watching later, know that indeed, whoever you are, wherever you are in life's journey, however you're joining us in worship, you are welcome here. We're glad to have you. You've already got the big announcement. And I want to say again to those who worked so hard, thank you. I did not think we could have those rooms cleaned out in one day. And Jean actually came and did some work on Friday. And didn't you say you were worn out enough that you slept all through Saturday? It was a lot of work at the end. So let us rejoice today and enjoy each other's company and enjoy God's presence. Okay, just as a reminder, have your communion elements ready to go next to you. Uh, at that time in the service, you'll be directed by pastor to open them up and everything else. So just have those ready. And if you have a paper copy or an electronic copy, uh, please join me in our call to worship. Today, Lord, we contemplate this paradox. No one can heal someone else, yet no one can heal by themselves. How can this be? Each of us must make the first step. Look deep inside. Find the wounds and hurts. Humbly ask for help. Then we need each other to hold up a mirror to our faults. Help us to see what we're doing wrong. Encourage us to keep growing and learning. Christ said, Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door will open. Ask, and it shall be given. May we remember these steps to true healing and nurture each other in Christian community towards love and good deeds. And now, please meditate on the words that you see as Jean plays for us. Help us to accept each other.
When we tread a path to your door, we find it open and welcoming. When we make requests of you, even the most difficult, selfish, or presumptuous, you give according to your grace and goodness. Forgive what is twisted or dangerous in us. When we make our requests and demands, restore us with the surprise of your willingness. Teach us to offer ourselves in return to those who make requests of us. Amen. The assurance of forgiveness. Here is the good news. God does love us. God does forgive us. God does restore us. When we live in Christ, we are made new. Our first scripture reading comes to us today from Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 23 to 25. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hopes without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as in the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. And our second reading comes from Luke, chapter 11, verses 9 through 13. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who if your child asks for a fish, will you give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will you give it a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? anyone else 
do the things that help them move forward in their lives. And we can't move forward all by ourselves. We need each other. So once again, you have the paradox. We can help ourselves move forward, but we can't do it alone. Those aren't really surprising statements because they really reflect what Scripture has been telling us all along. That God created us as beings who live in community. You know, in a community means we gather together and it's back and forth in an interchange. As human beings, we are not designed the way, say, bears are. Once the cubs are grown, once they become adults, bears go out on their own. They're very solitary creatures. We're designed more like the animals that live in some kind of gathering community. Wolves that live in a pack and support each other. Or a herd of wild horses that come together and have actually been noticed to supporting and helping each other. That's the way we're created to be. As a community where people are dependent and interactive and helping each other. For us, it sometimes causes attention. Because we live in a society that honors, I'm going to call it the myth of the self-made person. The person who can do it all themselves, who is totally independent. And we absorb that myth in certain ways. So for many people, even to accept an offer of help when someone gives it is uncomfortable. Especially if it's a simple job. Can I help you with that? Oh, no, no, I can do it myself. I'm not going to ask how many of us in this room are inclined to overwork because we try to do everything ourselves. What we forget is that even with a simple task, a very simple task. When someone says, can I help you? You have an opportunity to make a connection. Instead of saying no because we feel we need to somehow show our independence, if we say, oh, sure. Wonderful conversations seem to happen when we're doing the dishes together. Or when we're doing something else together, even if it's a very minor short-term task. Even more than being reluctant to accept help when it's offered, many people find it very difficult to ask for help, even when they need it. In my years of ministry, I have had a number of people come seeking help because they are overwhelmed by a situation that they are in no way responsible for. And yet, as they talk, they also talk about the feeling of shame that they need to be asking for help. That somehow they have failed because they are asking for help. It varies. If it's been a single mother trying to deal with a son facing cancer, a young son. And those of you who've worked in the food pantry, especially our, our giveaway with the cards, some of you have commented on the people who come and say, I know I'm in a fancy car. Please don't judge me. I really do need help. Or someone who says, when we've done prayers and we ask for prayers, the prayer is, I'm sorry, but my whole life has fallen apart. I don't know what I've done to deserve it, but thank you for being here. We are not made to be fully independent, fully 
self-supporting, fully self-sufficient people. We are made to be people who need each other. Which is a long, long way around in the scriptures we read this morning. The 10th chapter of Hebrews talks much about Jesus, the gifts he has brought us, the salvation he has brought us, God's love for us. And in these few verses is the reminder of how important we are to each other. I loved the translation of verse 24 when I read it. That we are called to incite each other to love and good deeds. Now think about that for a moment. That's not how we usually word, use and think of the word incite. Incite often has a negative connotation. We don't want to incite somebody to become angry or start a fight. Or incite a riot. Or some kind of argument. But when I actually looked up the word in sight, the dictionary said to engender any strong emotion. So we can incite each other to love. What does that mean? How do you learn to love? The only way people learn to love is to be loved. So to incite others to love means, as we experience God's love, to share that, especially with those who don't know what it's like to be loved. To love the unlovable and help them learn who they can be so that they can in turn incite love in others. And we're encouraged, we're told to encourage one another and not cease to meet with one another as some do. I don't know how you can encourage people if you never are encountering them somehow. One of the miracles of the pandemic was that we managed to stay together, and many of us, through the various Zoom groups that we formed, made new friends, new connections. And many <coughs> people said, I think we're closer together than we've ever been. I know people and have talked deeply with people. I've never talked to them before. To move forward, we have to build those ties. Now let me come to the Luke passage. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek or search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Yes, the passage is written about how we encounter God. But it's also tells us how we encounter each other. That as we enter into communion with God, we enter into community with each other the same way. We have to be willing to ask of each other when we need help. Do you know what else we need to ask? Somebody knew, he says, So tell me when and where you were born and what's happened since. And give somebody the freedom to tell their story. And they usually want to hear our story in return. And we build the connection. Seek. You know, when we're seeking something, seeking answers for something or information. It's amazing how when we ask other people, they often know the answers or know somebody else who does know the answer. There is a wealth, just in this room right now, there is a wealth of information and connections we're not even aware of. And they come out and sometimes in the strangest ways when we are willing to actually seek, not to just say, God, will you send this to me? 
but to say to people, can you help me? Can you help me find what I need? I don't think not has just to do with physical doors. Sometimes we need to emotionally knock to enter into a group. Simply saying, if a conversation is going on, may I enter this conversation or is it something you need to talk privately? And if it's some of the conversations that people have that we all have that are just for fun, usually the response is, oh sure, join us. The point is we can't move forward alone. We do have a future that we need to transform to be better than what it might otherwise be for ourselves and for others. We can't do it without each other. Not as a congregation, not as a family, not as a broader community. We really need each other. So on this day, let us celebrate. And let us remember that God indeed calls us to be people who aren't afraid to admit we can't do it all alone and to ask each other for help. Amen.
pray for those who were woken up by the 5.3 earthquake in Southern California yesterday morning and the ongoing shakes near the border of Mexico that will continue. We hear the news of ransomware attacks on important things, including hospitals. And we pray for better protection for all of us. We pray for help with the ongoing disinformation campaigns. For those too who cause deep divisions. And that may be what some people want. Help us to overcome the divisions that result. And we pray, pray for traveling mercies for Bill and others who will be traveling to see family. God, we take now a moment in silence to pray for the individuals, the communities, the issues that we know. Jesus taught us in a contemporary translation. Our Father who is in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth like it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now, <coughs> amen. Again, let us meditate as to the hymn as Jesus as Jesus plays. Oh, that's right.
We're invited here from north and south, east and west. We are invited to come to this table simply as guests. And everybody who loves God is welcome. Let us bow together in prayer. Blessed are you, you strong and faithful God. All your work, the height and depth, echo the silent music of your praise. In the beginning, your words, sun of light, night withdrew and creation dawned. As ages passed unseen, waters gathered on the face of the earth and life appeared. When the times at last had ripened and the earth grown full in abundance, you created in your image human beings, the stewards of all creation. And when we went astray, as your people tend to, you entered into covenant to renew the whole creation. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, as a father who joyfully welcomes his own, you embraced a people as your own and filled us with longing for peace that would last for justice that would never fail through countless generations. Your people have hungered for the bread of freedom. And from them you raised up Jesus, your son, the living bread, in whom ancient hungers are satisfied. He healed the sick, though he himself would suffer. He offered life, though death would hunt him down. And with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms and surrendered the spirit. And so we remember that on the night before he met his death, Jesus came to the table with those he loved. He took bread and praised you, God of all creation, broke the bread among his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body given for you. And when the supper was ended, he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to you, God of all creation. And he passed the cup among his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Gracious God, as we offer you our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we commemorate Jesus, your Son. Death could not bind him, for you raised him up in the spirit of holiness and exalted him as Lord of creation. Amen. Okay. Jesus also said, I am the bread of life who comes to me, who will never hunger, who believes in me, who will never thirst. Take the first level and peel it up, and you will find inside a very small weight. Those of you who need, and I hope got the rice wafer out there, simply take that. Take, eat, all of you. also said, I am the vine, you are the branches cut off from me, you can do nothing. So peel the second layer, carefully, you do not want to spill everything. This is the cup of salvation, drink of it all. Let's bow together again in prayer. God, throughout the ages, your people have come to this table in many different ways. We've come in big churches, in little churches with bread and wine, with crackers and juice, sometimes under a tree, 
sometimes gathered wherever people are gathered. And you have welcomed all of us. And we give you the thanks for the gift of your love and your son. And as you have fed us this day, may we feed those who are hungry. As we have had drink, may we give drink to those who are thirsty. And as you have bound us together into your body, may we remember and overcome the divisions that have developed. For the sake and in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We come to the end of the service. When I finish the benediction, stay seated a moment so I can give you some instructions. We're celebrating. Every Sunday should be a celebration. Every day should be a celebration of God's love. Let us share it with one another. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.